Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be installing a loaded amp and sub combo and a 2008 Forerunner. In this video, we're going to show you how to wire up this loaded subwoofer enclosure. Let's get started. Now, the cool thing about this subwoofer and amp combination is it has a built-in amplifier here with your terminals. What we're going to do is get this installed to a, an existing aftermarket radio. Now this subwoofer also can connect into the high level inputs so it allows you to connect right to the speaker leads in the event you didn't have an aftermarket radio that had RCA pre-outs. Now what we're going to do is head over to the bench and show you the amplifier wiring kit that we're using for our install. Now the wiring kit that we're going to need to install our Rockford Fosgate 12 inch loaded sub enclosure is this new concepts 8 gauge amplifier wiring kit. So the first thing that we're going to do is take our power wire here, 8 gauge, and we're going to mock up a fuse holder and get it run from the battery area up, a, up underneath the hood through the firewall into the cabin of the car along the kickboards all the way to the trunk area. Here we are underneath the hood. Now our battery obviously is on the driver's side. If we pop this cover on off, we have a terminal post. This is actually what we're going to use to connect our power wire to. And then we want our fuse as close to the battery as possible. So we'll probably mount it up and around here and then run that wire all the way down through our rubber boot here through the firewall. Now there's a little nipple here on the top that's unused. That's a perfect size for our 8 gauge. We'll cut that nipple off. It'll expose a hole in the grommet where we can fish our wire straight through into the cabin of the forward. Okay, so we went ahead and cut off that nipple. Just fit a hanger through so we can feed our wire through the firewall. Now there is a grommet just to the left of that. You're welcome to use that one as well, but this one's also meant for wiring. So we're gonna use this one as designated by Toyota. We got a little bit of soap and water down there to make it nice and slippery. And then we're gonna go inside and start pulling it through. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull the rest of the length through the firewall. Made a little fuse holder here and it's gonna mount on the battery bracket. I got that kind of cool shape, fits right on in and it bolts down. All right, so we got our fuse mounted. That nut holds everything down nice and secure. We got the right length that'll go right to that positive post as soon as we're ready. And then we split loomed everything and our wire goes down through the firewall. Again, like I said, there's another grommet there you're welcome to use, but we decided to go with that one because we know it's safe for wiring to pass through. So where it came out, we just tucked it up underneath, ran it all the way down. These, you saw us pull these off pretty straight and easy. Go underneath that B pillar. From the B pillar here, this also pops off just as well. And we're up to this point. Now, we're going to keep tucking it up underneath these panels to the uh, terminal area. Now, there's going to be a length here that we'll use the rest of our split loom for. We want to leave enough wiring out so we can move the box around in the trunk area. All right, so for our ground, we have this trim panel that goes here with two 10 millimeter bolts. We pull it out, that's what it is. And it allows us to have a little bit of access and we found a good grounding location. Now this bolt goes through this bracket, but also into the body and it's a nice threaded bolt. So what we did is we cleaned the paint off up underneath the, the bracket and we cleaned the paint off on the bracket itself. So we don't have any resistance there and essentially got that nice and bolted down for our ground. We used a wire brush here just so we can ensure that we have good continuity. And now we're gonna route our wire along with the power wire to the length where we can get the most out to connect to our amplifier. All right, so what we've done is we have prepped our wire, we tested taped it so it kept it in a nice tight bundle, and then as it's being moved around, the wire doesn't get cut or damaged at all just to protect it a little bit more. We hooked in our RCAs, and then our remote turn-on wire, and our base knob wire. It's all bundled together. Now obviously we saw where we grounded it, Power goes this way, our base knob goes along with the power wire, then our RCA's remote turn on wire, we tucked up underneath the carpet here, and went this way, all the way along, and that's where we came out. And then we're gonna go up the passenger side with our RCA's remote turn on wire towards the 
stereo cavity. With the RCAs on the passenger side, same principle. We're gonna go up underneath the kick panels all the way towards the radio. All right, so we finished running our wire with up underneath the carpet here, came out here. And that's where our RCAs and remote turn on wire have come out, just right there. So we can plug that into our base output as well as our remote turn on on the back of the radio. So at this point of time, we can start getting the radio back. Radio. Now, obviously the dash is torn apart and we didn't even cover the radio removal or radio replacement in this video because our first video covers all that in great detail. So check that video on out. Um, we'll link it down in the description, which walks you through step-by-step -step on how to remove and replace your existing radio in All your right, form. so we got our RCAs and our remote turn-on wire here. So for a remote turn-on wire, we need to connect that into the remote. On this radio specifically, it's a blue-white wire, which we have hanging out. The radio is blue-white wire, so we got that connected. We just crimp that in. And then these RCAs will go to the subwoofer output on the back of the radio. Okay, so everything's working. Let's go ahead and get the radio back in the dash. All right, so with the subwoofer all hooked up and ready to go, terminal all hooked up, put back together. At this point, we are done underneath the hood. questions on what we did here post a comment below we'd love to hear from you now if you also want to see this unboxing we pulled this apart showed you all the components that it came with we'll have that link down in the description as well as the card up above and also if you want to see how we did the radio install uh, we also did door speakers front and rear including the mid-range and tweeters those install videos will also be in the description for you thanks again for watching be sure to hit the like button and subscribe we post great content all the time on the channel and we'll see you in the next video